savages welcome to another episode of savages unscripted we are now at episode 18 the big one eight i am here in the studio with my co-host i don't want to say his nickname <laughs> why not man but he can say it for you it's your boy papi chulo and we're back with another one see here's my thing with nicknames out what's up i don't I don't think people should give themselves a nickname. I don't know why. It seems like that's something your friend should give you or a family member should give you. But honestly, you named yourself Papi Chulo, right? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> no, nobody else did it. <laughs> it was probably you or your mom. <laughs> oh, my God. That does have to stem around with the family. But no, nah, honestly, I just find it fun to name yourself. I don't really care how much... Um, should name or not name yourself it's just fun at times to do it and i typically like to make those kind of like strong or you know like offhanded type of nicknames because i like i just like the reactions i get from people it just makes me laugh more than anything so it's kind of like entertainment wise for uh for myself basically (laughs) i honestly it doesn't matter to me or i don't get offended if not if the people or fans don't call me that nickname it's just like uh Kind of like your own decision and how it helps you kind of entertain yourself. Is this your only nickname you've really had? Or have you had different ones throughout, you know, high school and middle school? So I had, I think, only two that really stuck out. Obviously, I have my base one, which is just Al, because no one could say my name properly. I heard anything from (laughs) Alvaro to Alberti. I don't know how you go to that. Uh... Alvaro, it's just, it doesn't go well with that, with the English pronunciation Have of you got an alfalfa? What's up? Have you got an alfalfa? alfalfa. Oh, yeah, I actually did. <laughs> I remember that. I got that a couple <laughs> start times. start calling you that. No, but uh, I, one that really <laughs> stuck out was, uh, they called me Avadacious in middle school. Avadacious? Yeah. I think, I think my friend started calling me that. I don't know why, but that name kind of stuck. And uh, that was in middle school with a group of friends that I played basketball with. It, it was just out of the blue, too. I was kind of surprised. I thought you were weird. Huh? I thought you were weird. That's, that's, that's a very weird name. Man, you guys, you're telling me, bro. But it, I, it, I like the name. It sounded pretty smooth. Nothing too flashy. But yeah, those were, were mainly the two nicknames that stuck out to me. There, there's probably more, but nothing that was really consistent. Hmm. What about you? I remember a uh, year... Yeah, so um, you've noticed, you know, you follow me on Instagram, and I think it's also my uh, Twitter name and probably Snapchat, which I don't use anymore. But for years, I've been calling myself Dr. Hector. It's just something I'd call myself years ago, and I just stuck on. And for everything, every screen name I try to use that, except for Xbox, as you know already. Mm -hmm. But it just stood, and it got to the point where that's just what I... I, I never wanted people to call me that. It's just, you know, that's just what I put as my Instagram name or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then over time, people started calling me that. There have been times where I've had people call me Dr. Hector. And I thought it was pretty cool. It just caught on, you know, unintentionally. And I remember when I was an RA, um, I would tell them, you know, uh, people call me Dr. Hector. People call me Dr. Hector. And over time, my students thought I was a professor. Yeah. <laughs> Just because people call me Dr. Hector. So I thought it was pretty cool. And I like, I was like, I mean, I'm not lying to you guys. You guys implied I'm a professor. I didn't tell you guys I'm a professor. So over time, people started giving me that respect that I probably didn't earn. <laughs> so you just boast some confidence. That's what I also like to. That's why I kind of nicknamed myself. Because it's just kind of shows a little bit of confidence, which I don't really. Which is surprising because I don't really care much about boasting confidence but at the same time you got to have some sort of level of confidence just to have that uh type of entertainment for that shit like just basically not care about that and same with you you just it wasn't really a name that you named yourself but it still stuck around and people still ended up kind of giving you a little respect for it just because of how the name was yeah and it got to the point where there's been times where i've thought to myself you know i've thought of like a cool name for like you know, my Instagram or whatever. And there's been times where I've thought, like, should I change this? But I've had this for so long. It's almost been a sort of branding for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, like you think of branding like in business. And we've talked before. And like when we first made this podcast, we we really wanted to know what we were doing because we don't want to last minute change our name or 
change a slogan or change something because then at that point you created this branding and you're just basically taking the rug out from under people you know they're getting used to this and you're just changing it so there's been times where i was like you know should i change this but no nah, you know i've invested so much time in dr hector or i'm just gonna keep it so it's a part of me so you you are you you you're not gonna fully keep it then or you don't mind losing that nickname How would that work? I don't care about the nickname in terms of people calling me yeah, that. Same. But I mean, in terms of displaying like social media, I think I'm going to keep that just because, like I said, I it's I see it as a sort of branding that I've had for so long. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, with the podcast and stuff, you want to grow. There's that business aspect of it. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I think I need a bit of a branding on this too and the way I present myself. So um, I told you a while ago, um, I don't want to get too much into the details, but there was someone that found me on Instagram that I didn't want them to find me. Remember I told you about this? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I got that a little resolved. So, anyways, so for those listening, um, I, my, I'm on a public account on Instagram. And at times, I don't think about the people that I don't want to find me or follow me. I just haven't thought about it uh, completely. And then someone found me and... I was like, ooh, okay, so I made my account private, but then I realized I'm on a business account and you're not supposed to be private. And I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, well, what do I do? And I considered changing my name, but I was like, no, I'm not going to change my branding just because one person found me. And so, you know, I just blocked the account and um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking to myself. Like, I'm, cause the way I saw it is I'm not changing my, you know, my account, which is, you know, by extension, a piece of me. For somebody, just because I don't want them to find me, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I just I, I didn't like the thought of that because I, I think very easily there's a lot of people that maybe if an ex or someone started following them, they feel very uncomfortable or I don't know, maybe they I've known people who changed their name on social media. So family or exes or old friends can't find them. And I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to change myself or the way I display myself for a person, especially if it's a person you don't talk to because that's too much energy for someone that doesn't shouldn't matter yeah should you even care that's the thing uh, there's typically i don't think there's that much of an extent or the extent is so low for you to care much unless maybe it's a job or maybe it's your boss but even then that shouldn't really go into your into account as much yeah social media has changed so much man like the way we do things and the way we see things and Um, I recently read something. I, I, you know, we're on a conversation on social media now. I don't even know how this started, but let's just get into it. I, right. I told you I was going to bring something up concerning social media. So a while ago, I, I had read this post and I really like this because I think in times I see a lot of people using social media negatively. I see a lot of people comparing each other when, you know, that oh, really yeah. shouldn't be the case. And there was this post about, um, what did it say? It said that things people post on social media is their highlight reels. Don't compare that to your behind the scenes. So basically, um, you know, when you see people traveling and they're, I don't know, every weekend or once a month traveling and you start to feel like shit because you feel like you're in a, you know, you're just struggling and grinding. Like mm -hmm. you don't know what they're going on behind the scenes. You know, you don't know what they're going through. And basically you're comparing your grind to their successes, which is two different chapters. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Hmm. On thoughts of people uh, comparing themselves like that? It, it, to me, it's yeah, pretty it's... confusing because at the end, you choose to follow those people. And for you to rather yeah. enjoy, I don't know, their content, you kind of make self-harm on yourself. And it's not the person's fault. But typically, it's kind of it it's not doesn't always happen frequently. But I've noticed that it's it's a trend that to blame the successful person rather than, or you know not the successful but the one being focused on more than uh, having the concern for the person uh, giving this sort of treatment to themselves. Uh, typically, uh, how do you say this? Like I, I know some pretty well off successful people, and before I. I previously, they worked in fields I didn't really believe were actually, uh, had potential to actually be true or even attainable. But as I've learned and gotten to know them, done some research, had my own experiences in those specific fields, you get to understand that it's possible. 
But from the outside, it seems like it's so unattainable because you don't take action towards it. Maybe even if it's appearance wise, uh, confidence wise, materials, anything of this stuff. At times, I feel people shouldn't just sit on your ass and just scroll through and just whine about yourself. Why not doing it? You should want to do it. If you want it, you got to go for it. But if you're just going to be, uh, you know, moaning and crying about it in bed, then what else do you want? You know? But it, it seems like an unfair mm-hmm. treatment of successful people. So, yeah, that's those, those are my thoughts. <laughs> and that's the thing about social media. We've talked about this a few times where it's just so new and we don't really fully understand it. And there's no really a right way to use it. So, you know, there's a bunch of negativity on the Internet. There's in, in comments and we've talked, we made fun about Facebook comments. <laughs> and... um yeah, there's just so much negativity and like comparing ourselves or cyberbullying. There's just, there's a lot going on. It's a great tool, social media. It really is. I think it's a great way to promote your business or to to network and get in touch with people or send uh, Farmville invites. You know, <laughs> Farmville, it's a great tool oh for God. all this stuff. You oh, I that? hated those, man. I got spammed so many invites. And I was like, dude, I don't even play this. And some people that probably went to your school and then they saw you as a reference, you know, they just they would just do like a mass invite. And I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> those are so, those are fun, but weird. I, I remember, I remember once, and this is, I, I don't, I don't know if those games are still very popular or played, mm. but I remember years ago when specifically Farmville was in, um, I guess my family got into it and like a few of the older family members, my aunts and stuff, they were getting into Facebook. So they got one of my uh, <laughs> aunts into Farmville and my cousins were using it and I guess my sister was using it. And there was one uh, holiday, I'm not sure if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas years ago, where I remember sitting at the table, I think I was eating or something. And I saw like six or seven people on Farmville on their phones or on their laptops at this like holiday get together. And I was like, okay, you guys better not send me any invites because I am not clicking anything. <laughs> oh my God. Those are the days. But yeah, social media. It's um a few weeks ago. I, we haven't talked about it. Mm-hmm. I talked about it with Elias, our intern, but I'm not, I sure, I'm sure you've noticed it at this point but instagram changed their um policy with likes you can't see the amount of likes anymore oh really i i didn't know this go to any instagram post for now it will not show you a number yo that's weird let me check it out right now they i heard it being talked about about a month or two ago and then they suddenly changed it i want to say it was changed just a few weeks ago really i mean i could still view it right now yeah it's it still views it no you can see who you can see who likes it? I believe if it's if they're like public accounts, mm-hmm. um, but it won't show a number. If it's a public account or if it's a friends account, I believe public accounts will show up. So oh, okay. like you can see who likes something. Oh, uh, okay, I get you. But I believe if they're private; they won't even be shown. But there is no number. You won't say seventy-one likes. You can't click on another person's post or on another person's nude, and you won't see the number. And the amount of, you know, the amount of likes, you, you won't see that anymore. And I remember at the very beginning when they announced this, at first it was just, you know, uh, Instagram announces new feature and it, it hadn't been impl- implemented yet. And a lot of people were just angry that they can't see these number of likes, which doesn't change your experience on social media. <laughs> you can still post, you can still like stuff, you can still see stuff. But um, now, but I know one of the big concerns was, People care about the number so much. They want to know that they're getting more likes than other people. Or they want to know that maybe someone's getting, you know, like, ah, she only got three likes, <laughs> you know? But, like, now you can't see this stuff. So, just to clarify, it won't show likes for people you follow or is it just people you don't follow as well? I believe yourself as well. No, no, yourself. No, 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 no. You, you, if you click on, you have to click on the post. Mm-hmm. And click on the likes, and then it'll show you the number on yourself. But, like, if you click on mine, it will not show you the quantity, like how many likes I've gotten. Really? Let me see. Nope. Okay, so I probably have to update my Instagram <laughs> because I still view it. Probably. You're probably the one person, <laughs> that, can the one person that can see the amount of likes. <laughs> if you, if you, okay, you're savages, if you guys want to know how much a certain person has in likes, 
you guys can let Al know. Hit him up. <laughs> Be like, hey, send, send him the name and the link to the person's account, and he'll tell you <laughs> exactly how many likes that person has. They may say they got 70, but if they got 40, he'll let you know. <laughs> I'll start a Savages Unscripted uh, s- subcategory just to exposing how many likes people get. <laughs> This week, Kim Kardashian got only 1 million likes instead of 2 million. Oh, my God. You remember that dumb craze? Yeah, that, that, uh, you remember that egg post? Which craze? Where that got more more likes than the uh, Kylie Jenner post as the number one all-time the liked. Egg post? Yeah, it's a post of an egg. Literally, I think, I don't remember the caption, but supposedly the goal was, let's beat Kylie Jenner's uh, Instagram post, which was the most liked post of all time on Instagram. And they set a goal to beat it, and they did. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like a community effort. Oh, that's great. Congratulations to the egg. You <laughs> deserve it. That is excellent. <laughs> I'm happy. I got to say, you, even though it's just something you eat in the mornings, it deserves the top spot over Kylie Jenner. That's for a fact. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait. Al, you make it sound like you can only eat eggs in the morning, <laughs> sir. I eat them mostly during dinner. Okay, man. That, well, that's you. <laughs> Breakfast is better at night. Hey, but yeah, just going back, uh, I, and we have talked about this before. It, it makes me think at times, are people just, you know, um, is it the easiest way to just get satisfied off likes or numbers? Is it something we just are programmed to like, you know? Because at times it's concerning. Well, I know. Well, the one thing, too, like we've talked about this, too. I think you brought this up with me a while ago. I don't think it's a discussion we talked about here, but Mm -hmm. the whole idea that you get that rush, you get that high from likes and, you know, that appraisal on um, social media. Oh, yeah. But I think is it like, uh, like, is it kind of like a genetic thing? Like, is it something predetermined that we will assume that most people will like that? Or do you think it's a choice? What do you mean? Because uh, at times I feel for most part, a, a lot of people care about that. Even myself at times, I, I, my goal is not to care about this stuff. That's why I, I hardly even, that's why my Instagram isn't even updated. But I, it, it still kind of affects you I in a way. Different, I think it's different reasons for different people because, you know, you might be just the vain person, you know, you could be a cocky person. Um, maybe like I mentioned, like maybe you're comparing yourselves to others. Mm-hmm. Maybe you you need to have a certain amount of likes more than this other person. <laughs> but maybe there's also like a bit of a business or accomplishment aspect to it. You know, like, oh, I've gotten this much amount of likes. You know, maybe you have a, a – maybe you're using your social media for your music or something. Maybe you want to garner those likes. You want to see those. And you want people to see that you have those likes because that to you maybe that shows like a trophy. Like, hey, I do music or I do podcasting and I have this many likes. Like this shows like people – listen to me and people like it but now people can't see that maybe in in a creative aspect that makes sense it could also be like a watered down version of flexing with money you could be like hey look how many likes i yeah, get no, but that's that, yeah that's yeah that is just that creative reason and just flexing that's what it is you want to show people um i'm not incredibly successful but i had this much success people <laughs> like it <laughs> that's funny you just just do a couple of nudes you'll be successful by then but uh it's yeah i remember once i shared a I shared a photo of some, um, I think I had stir fry. They had stir fry at Cal State San Bernardino. Mm-hmm. And I had posted that I was going to post nudes on my Instagram. And I posted a photo of the of the noodles. And I said, here are some nudes in case you guys wanted any. Have a good Monday. And people were messaging me like, damn, yeah, you tease. <laughs> oh, my God, this guy. <laughs> yeah, but... Hey, um, man, how... This- while we're on it, li- yeah, go ahead. What's up? I was gonna say the holiday rush is kicking in still, and it seems that it could be somewhat tied to social media. I know you wanted to bring it up. Yeah, actually, that's what I was, I was really gonna bring up. But uh, something I was gonna discuss, like you said, because of the holidays, and I think at times we tend to think about you know Christmas movies or Christmas trees or shopping. You know, this is a very common one. We already talked about Black Friday, mm-hmm. but the holiday shopping and that rush. But, um, you know, I was reading an article about uh, seasonal depression or holiday depression, as it's called. And basically, it's not it's not an officially dubbed thing. 
but some experts are tar- are starting to talk about this now. And basically, ho- holiday depression is just this idea that, and statistically, that during the holidays, depression levels go go up, and so do suicide rates. And a lot of it has to do with you know the, just the financial aspects of the holidays. You know, all this holiday shopping and decorating and just all that stuff. And people. The thing is, right now, also with social media, people want to go aesthetic and go all out. Mm-hmm. So I think when you see people going all out, you want to go all out too. So financially, emotionally, and just this idea that, you know, there's this depression that's, it's not just depression. It's its own thing. And it's a, something we're seeing more of now. So I thought that was really interesting. So there's not, there's not, is there concrete evidence to you know, eventually lead to this making it an actual legitimate concern? Or is it just like a couple well, outliers? Just, just like I said, you know, there's some experts that are now starting to talk about it. Because I was looking at older articles. And at first it was just, oh, well, society's talking about this. Social media is talking about this. But now experts are starting to talk about it. Hmm. And um, I mean, it's not something you're going to be, um, what's it called? You, you know, a doctor's not going to say like, oh, this is exactly what you have. This is what I'm declaring you have. But I don't know. I think it's just something that many people might experience and they just don't think that it's a common issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with, you know, during the holiday, like if you're very concerned with shopping and all this stuff, spending money, you still have rent, you still have other responsibilities. So that makes it harder to do those things that you enjoy. And I think at times if you don't do those things, you... You know, maybe you're comparing yourself to others and you feel like you're not doing anything for the ho- You're not enjoying your holidays. I mean, it just makes me wonder, just because I uh, recently watched the movie I- The Irishman, but uh, it makes you think back to what if it was, you know, the older periods when this stuff didn't exist and the attitude, the different attitude people had, you know, maybe people would have been just shut up and it could be, it could be like a pro attitude that. Just shut up. Don't care about your feelings and keep keep working hard or something like that. You know, it wouldn't be like, oh, you know, focus on your emotions so much to a point that it gets a bit concerning. Because at times I feel it there's there's an imbalance typic at times where people focus too much on their emotions rather than actions. And and that kind of brings back to the point where it seems that back in the other days, it'll be like, just don't care about your emotions and do your work <laughs> type of shit and focus on doing something. And now it's like focus on your emotions t- too much to a point that it overruns your rationale and your actions that it l- could lead to this concerning things like this. But uh, yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I-, I was just mentioning. Holidays are tough. <laughs> it shouldn't be, man. What the hell? It's. Uh, I just want to. I remember when I came from Peru to you to the U.S. and the f- uh, the first thing I always thought was the commercials I saw, especially in American commercials where people were so happy eating I don't know turkey for Thanksgiving and Christmas, just opening up their p- Christmas presents in the morning. How could that sort of you know joy be now represented by a concern of suicide rates? That just is crazy to me. Everyone looks forward to en- during these times to enjoy themselves, but it's it, it's it's kind of it's crazy to me how this could it could actually be going the other way yeah i you know i agree like you said you know it shouldn't be that but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist i know and uh the article i was reading it was uh it was a health art article a health magazine and one of the things they were talking about and this makes sense i can't believe i didn't really think about this but and they were talking about you know why don't well why don't we see this why don't we see these people that are depressed why you know this is something that we're learning about through social media but why wasn't this really talking before and one of the big things is like you said during the holidays it's, it's a joyous time um in the music and in the visuals the christmas lights and movies and all the things that we see you know the, col- the christmas colors like you know it's just something that i think especially to a child like it makes you happy it makes you feel warm mm-hmm. that's what it's designed for but the thing is that they were seeing in this article was that exactly that. This is a time when people should feel happy and warm and joyous. But if you're not feeling that, and if you're feeling depressed, I guess a lot of people feel judged about that. They feel like, I'm going to kill the mood. I'm a buzzkill. I'm a, you know, mm-hmm. you're just killing it. 
it's just one of those things where it's not easy for everybody to ask for help. They feel like they're gonna like they're a mm. like they're a burden. Oh, okay, that makes Especially sense. during the holidays when everyone should be happy, everyone should be colorful and warm. You don't want to be that person that's a crutch. That's just ah, uh, I'm depressed. Ah, uh, you know this. I'm, I need money. You know, like people don't want to talk about this. Hmm. And this this is probably obviously been going on for a while, huh? That's, that's just a new yeah, like, dynamic for example, I mean, for, that's just entering to at least the spotlight. And I, I would just be interested how developments come into play. Let's see let's see the actual numbers and results and how big of a concern this could be. Yeah. Hey, but now that I was bringing up The Irishman, I recently just uh, watched most of the movie. <laughs> I still haven't finished it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't mean, I don't blame you for watching most of it because it is a long movie. Uh, I think last time I checked, it was like, three hours and like 30 minutes long and i'm like damn dude like but you're late to the party i know i don't, i'm always late but um my That's my true. dad my stepdad he was like pumping up this movie for a while he was even counting down the days when it was going to come out on netflix and i think it came out like a week ago Same year. and just yesterday we started watching it because he wouldn't watch it without us <laughs> And uh, like a little kid, he went he went to the couch. He's like, "Let's go, let's go!" And he started getting the pills and everything. Right, it was pretty funny. But uh, I watched the movie. I liked it. I like um, I, these type of mob movies are really interesting, just based on the acting and also how the times were back then. It's a, it's an entertaining time period. People could focus and make a movie on. And um, mm. it, it, I heard it's already been nominated for a Grammy. Was hasn't it? It got nominated for something. I get those awards mixed up, but it did get nominated for something. And that is a bit of a controversy right now, too. Why Why is that so? I know a lot of people did not like that. A lot of people did not like that movie. A lot of people praise it, but a lot of people were disappointed with that movie. What was one of the main concerns? The thing is, is it's always, I think it always mostly has to do with hype. Like you said, you know, your, uh, it was, your stepdad was excited for this movie, right? Mm-hmm. So this movie did have a lot of hype. People have been talking about this for a long time. This was announced a while ago. I was looking forward to this for a while too. And this is one of those things where you get so many articles and so much talk about this movie, so much praise. And it's a specific kind of movie. I mean, like you said, it's like three and a half hours and it's um, this old mobster movie. That's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. A movie that's three and a half hours, not for everybody. Those that know about Martin Scorsese's films, the guy that directed this, those films aren't for everybody. But when something has a lot of hype, everybody wants to, they feel like they have to experience it. And it just wasn't for everybody. And people have been saying like they were let down, they were disappointed, and that this was just one of the biggest letdowns. Um, I have a close friend who, you know, we talk a lot about films and I respect his uh, film choices and the way he talks and critiques his films. That's one of the things he said about the Irishman as well is that it was just really overhyped. Like it was good, but it was overhyped. And could it be that could yeah. the effect that it was going to be on Netflix and such as in within the movie being now for such a small amount of time could it that have been part of the hype? You know that it's a free movie that's being directed by a great uh, director and great and done by great actors. Is, could that have played into it? Well, it was released in theaters first. Oh, yeah, but it didn't take that long to get to Netflix. Yeah, I think my dad told me it, t- it took like three weeks, basically, to get to Netflix or something like that. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, and the reason for that is because it was meant for Netflix, but they just happened to show it in three years oh, right before that. Okay. Because, yeah, and one thing I'm hearing, too, is like there's specific ways to watch this movie. And for me, it's, yeah, there is one way to watch it, to sit down and enjoy it. That's the only way to watch a movie. <laughs> but... um. I, I, for one, I, I loved it. Um, it was a bit long and I'm that person where, especially we're now with movies, I can't stay still one hour in and I have to do something <laughs> like I'm getting up, I'm stretching, I'm doing push ups. I, I, I even at times would just pause it just to check Reddit for a few seconds. Like, I feel like I can't stay put and the movie is three and a half hours long and that's just not for everybody. Uh, but I feel at times, it- but I, oh, I, go ahead. I was going to say that I, I loved it. Um, I really enjoyed the movie and what it was in this over uh, glorification of this, um, this this mobster life. You know, over romanticizing this. I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's been great so far. 
Oh yeah, yo, I was about to give you spoilers. <laughs> but uh, I, I actually want to. Can get, you believe <laughs> So Inside died in the end? Dumbledore dies. <laughs> oh my god! I remember when I did that little trick on Angel for uh, the Avengers Endgame. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Where it showed oh, red bed. Spoiler. <laughs> then something I don't know, something that rhymed with those two words, and then it was uh, Tony Stark at the end. So red bed. <laughs> uh, but going back, and I actually w- I remember- wanted to get your input on this. Um, since you mentioned that people were, thought mm-hmm. that it was too overhyped, can't can't you think also people could be rational to critique it so much? Because at the end of the day, it it was a free movie. It's not like you could expect much, unless you know, in the monetary sense, you gotta be critic super critical about it, especially because you're paying for this. But if it's something basically already included in you know, part of your, part of a standard that society has, which is Netflix, or part of the service, should I say, that society has, do you think it should be, you know, p- put up with such, too much critical, uh, too many, too many bad comments or being uh, put down to so much by people? Well, uh, you, can you elaborate on that, please? I, I'm just basically thinking, um, why why was this overhyped so much? Because I typically Netflix, I ha- I haven't well, I don't use Netflix so much or pretty often, but it's hard for me to come to come to a movie that gets quote unquote overhyped and yet still gets a nominee for certain awards. And it was a basically a movie that was included in a service that's pretty inexpensive and people already have. It's just on its own for it being nominated for so many awards makes it seem that. Um, it's getting too much um, unnecessary uh, negative feedback. But you're mainly asking, like, why was it so overhyped in the beginning? Mm, yeah, basically in a way, yeah. Because it's... Because it... there's a clear answer on that. Like, there is an answer on that. <laughs> and that's simply because Martin Scorsese, this guy's a very famous director. He's done some big movies. Uh, Goodfellas, Departed, Wolf of Wall Street, Taxi Driver, like... This guy's been known for his big movies already. And when you factor in uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci, Mm -hmm. there was hype from the beginning as soon as this was announced. Okay. Like you've talked about, uh, we were talking about Hobbs and Shaw, and you were saying that, um, I think you said you mainly watched it because of the big names in those movies, right? Yeah. Like you said, there's those big talents like The Rock, and I don't even know who else is in those movies. I'm not even going to try. Um but basically, like you said, like there's these big names. That's what this is in for the genre of these mobster movies. Like there were these big, this big name director, and these huge names, ridiculously huge names um, for actors. Uh, I mean, Robert De Niro already. Like you know, you hear Rob, mobster movie and Robert De Niro. Like come on, it's like peanut butter and jelly. But I think from the moment when you when people heard all those things, immediately there was hype. And immediately it was put on a huge pedestal as well. So if there was so much hype, why wasn't it just Put it out in the movies, you know, and then eventually put on Netflix later. I couldn't have just grossed a lot more money being released in the movies than just Netflix. Maybe money wasn't all that was important. Mm. Maybe we don't care about money as much as you do, El. <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, it's such a big uh, movie that's like, seems like it's gotten so much hype. It, it's just crazy to me how. Maybe, especially with all those actors, how much budget that movie could have had yet end up selling just for Netflix rather than trying to make make some box office office hits before going to Netflix so quickly. It's an interesting the thing decision. Is, uh, maybe it was this one was maybe this one was more about accessibility. You know, like you said, Netflix is that's that's a norm right now. And then when you compare it to like DC, Marvel, and Star Wars, where I, maybe there's some that they care more about breaking records. They care more about, you know, those grossing numbers and the box office and all that stuff. Maybe this was just more about accessibility. I haven't looked into, you know, why it went basically so easily and quickly to Netflix. But, I mean, it's a Netflix exclusive. It's not like it's just a movie that it came out already then it ended up on Netflix. Maybe it was that. Maybe there's other reasons, you know. Things are going to be changing. It's really now with Netflix that's already been a big giant and Disney Plus and a bunch of other streaming services, I think we're going to see more of this. These bigger movies, these bigger titles, bigger directors and actors, you know, working with these streaming services. Okay. Hey, just to talk on a broad subject before we go, uh, I was, we were talking about this a little earlier, but 
I was just I stumbled a couple into a couple videos that um, I don't know if you heard of this YouTuber called Wisecrack. Sounds familiar. I think you've talked to me about it. Well, one of the main uh, commentators in that on the YouTube channel, he he talks about what's his what he considers to be the worst movie. And at first, he kind of breaks it down where he says, you know, there's good movies, obviously, like The Avengers and all these box office hits. Then there's also bad movies that were, you know, probably overhyped and crashed. Like, let's think one of the top of my head. Uh, I can't think of any right now, but uh, maybe Star Wars. I don't know. But and then you go for tragic and and surprising movies. Surprising movies, he, I'm not him specifically, but I could characterize it to just being a movie and a that had a small amount of budget, didn't have big actors yet, was a complete hit. Like, uh, I don't think there was one called The Raven Lady or something like that. It was a couple years ago. That that was a small budget movie and it made great hits. And then there's also tragic movies where it, it had a big budget, it had all the actors in the world and the, anybody they wanted, yet it was such a bad movie, such as... Um, this the one he talks about was South South Park Towers South Hill South Hill something, but it basically had Dwayne Johnson, had other great actors, and had a, such a huge budget. The CGI was amazing, and uh, I think the budget was almost close to two hundred million plus. And guess how much they made in the box office? How much? Three hundred thousand. Which film was this? <sighs> I can't fully remember the. Uh, it was released in two thousand six. I could pull it up for you right now. Uh, where is this movie? Southland Tales. There you go. Okay, there you go. So it had a budget of fifteen million, and it only made three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. That's just sad. <laughs> and uh, to me, it just made me think a bit. Um, based on just describing all those four categories, how movies could just fall under that. It's not just a one-way cut if it's either good or not. Because I typically thought about that before. Even of all small budget movies that turned out to be kind of like hits in a way. And and just because of how of how good of quality or entertainment they brought. Like and then there's also mm-hmm. those movies that were so bad yet they were well received over time, like Fine Wine, they aged well. Or they were so bad in that moment that they still became popular. Like I I remember it was like Sharknado, you remember that movie? Oh, that's your favorite movie, isn't it? <laughs> it's so dumb, dude. <laughs> but I think uh, after the movie came out, uh, I remember there was a little bit of hype about it, not because it was any good, but it was so bad it was still entertaining. Or uh, I don't know, there's like one more, but it's interesting to me how many different dynamics movies could fall under. And at, at some of them, you could take into account just the reception of it. And then, uh, such as just, um, how do you say, like, such such as the bad movie, such bad movies that they still were good, such as uh, the recent one that also came out was Captain Marvel. A lot of people criticized it, yet it got a lot of box office hits. Or then you could also think about just bad movies that were still good, such as The Room, when that came out in, like, 2003. I don't know what that actor's name is called, but he that movie was really bad. The acting was really bad. Yeah, people liked it over time. Like he, even recently, as last year, people were still kind of liking the acting based on just making memes about it. <laughs> and some people were actually looking, going back and actually watching the movie, which is funny enough. But uh, it's crazy to me how movies could just go from one direction to another. It's not as simply as just saying it was good or bad. You know, maybe over time it well, could be the different. The thing is too, like the thing too that people have to understand because you know at times we just hear these numbers, but. I think people tend to confuse um, financial success, you know, these this monetary success, to quality when the two th- are very different things. Because um, I mean, a very great example, um, the movie I talked to you about months ago, the thriller uh, *Midsummer*. When you compare that, that had like a six thousand, I believe, six thousand dollar opening, no, six million. Then you compare that to a movie like *Hobbs and Shaw*. Like, <laughs> Just because Hobbs and Shaw makes more, like, doesn't mean that's a better movie. Boom, better movie. Mm-hmm. You know, people. T- I know a lot of people that tend to hear like, "Oh, this movie's making so much money. It's so good." No, it's not. I, and that's another thing too with films is just 
bun- bunch of subjectivity. Like you like different things than other people. That's the mm-hmm. thing about all these critics and critiques and reviews. Like honestly, they shouldn't hold too much value. So what do you think should um, them? I don't. That's the thing about all this entertainment. People like different things. You can't really just say this is good, this is bad. You can say this did good, this did bad. I think, mm-hmm. but. I mean, in terms of the quality, it's tough. Um, I know you might know a movie that you thought was shit, but someone might actually like it. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that your opinion matters more than that person's. <laughs> and that's the thing yeah, about that's films. Like, and that's the same Same with music. There's so much music. Uh, you, we, we've been seeing with the Spotify rewinds, you know, we're seeing what everybody listens to now. And when you think about that, like there's so many different genres and someone might just not listen to one. That doesn't mean it's bad. Mm. and it just it i think it's so hard to really measure this i think you can see the money yeah. and say oh this company lost money this company made money like the joker they hit uh, actually a big record recently they became one of the most profitable movies because they had a bit of a low budget but they made so much money in return it, it actually smashed so, you know, the then, records for the best premiere best most grossing premiere of all time that's crazy. I uh, I believe that was was that for the month of October or for a rated R. I don't fully know, but I definitely do know that it it was for one of those two uh, the most grossing. And see, then that's and that's another thing too. And I'm gonna be super controversial here. Uh, have you seen Joker yet, dude? I've seen it already. I actually like still it. have it, <laughs> dude. I was waiting for okay, it. Okay, so you know, so here's the thing. I'm, <laughs> So here's the thing. I'm going to be super controversial right now. Like you said, like we said, you know, it's doing great in money. It's doing good in box offices. It's breaking so many records. But to me, I was disappointed with the movie. I thought it was the most overrated movie of 2019. I thought it was a good movie. I didn't think it was way worth that much hype. But then that's the thing. That doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And just because it made so much money and because it was so successful and breaking so many records, that doesn't mean it's the best movie of 2019. Yeah, at the end, it could just come down to, um, like you said, you know, people have different tastes and preferences, or maybe, you know, their positions. At the end of the day, it made a ton of money. Who So who, so the person who made all that money, why would he care about what people think? Exactly, yeah. And at the end of the day, yeah. That, and that's the thing, that monetary success, that's for them. That's their profit. Like, that doesn't signify anything, really. Kind of reminds me of Pyramid Schemes. <laughs> But that'll probably be a discussion for another oh, day. Oh, we talked about this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the only thing I could probably say, uh, because I've also gone, um, not, f- I haven't gotten involved in pyramid schemes, but what I'm saying is um, at times pyramid schemes could actually shadow or end up making bad publicity for industries or possible uh, opportunities or, yeah, opportunities that could actually benefit people, yet it's translated differently or delivered differently through uh, pyramid schemes that it just makes it foggy and people not be able to trust it anymore such as like just a quick a quick example is uh forex uh i've been offered forex so much and you could actually make a ton of money out of it if you know what you're doing but there's so many pyramid schemes about the forex is you don't really learn what how to work the forex but rather you build a team and every time you get an extra member you get like 200 dollars a month or something and that ends up tarnishing the reputation for that sort of uh, potential financial opportunity for you. And it's, ah, man, it's kind of annoying. It's also like Ty Lopez, where um, he offers such shitty programs. People buy it just because how good mar- marketer he is. And he's gone viral and all this crap. And uh, it's so annoying, dude. But we could discuss it later. <laughs> I love that episode of The Office with the pyramid scheme. Do you remember that one? Oh, my God. <laughs> I love the one. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude went up and just put a triangle in the <laughs> Jim? Jim. <laughs> yeah. When, and he's like, that, that sounds like a pyramid scheme. And Michael's like, that's it's not a pyramid scheme. And he explains it like, yeah, I recruit two people. And then they recruit people. And they recruit people. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim basically just draws a triangle around this display that they wrote down on the whiteboard and it's a pyramid um, well trying and then michael's like excuse me i gotta make some calls <laughs> i gotta make some phone calls <laughs> <laughs> oh man but without being said this has been once again savages and scripted follow us at savages and scripted on instagram 
and Savages Unscript on Twitter. And any final message? Follow us at Savages Unscripted. That's our Twitter handle. That doesn't matter. Savages Unscripted. Okay. Savages Unscripted. But is there anything else you want to pop to our audience before we go, Hector? Yeah, you guys. Uh, <laughs> if you realize that maybe Al is saying some shit that's wrong, please let us know. <laughs> uh, our intern Elias wants to do a podcast where he just basically corrects him. Oh, so this is something <laughs> we're looking into. Uh, we could probably the build light? a whole series on that. Oh, fuck it. What's what's it going to be called? Uh, Al revised. Al edited. Oh man, who knows? Uh, it could be uh, what do you call it? College for Al One One. I'm not sure. But uh, oh, one one more thing before we go. Let me read you your last two nickname submissions. Go ahead. So the last two have been Chupacabra because I don't know why, but they said you're hairy. <laughs> And then the other one was spam guy. I there I have no idea why. <laughs> but those are your two new submissions, Hector. So I just wanted to ask you I'm spam guy. Do I do I spam people? <laughs> I'm not sure, dude. Or you probably like spam a lot? <laughs> no, actually, so what's funny is I forgot I have no and I know I don't. I've had spam like once. But um that was a fun that was a funny story I'll tell another day, but so I forgot I have access to that Instagram account, and you know I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you do the posting and stuff. But I realized like you know I can see some of this stuff too that's going on. <laughs> and, and after um, yeah. what's up? I, I was I was just about to say um, I was gonna just read out all the nicknames and see you know maybe pick three which you'd like so people could just vote on it and see out of those three which one you end up keeping. Oh boy! So besides, I, I regret saying any of these. <laughs> So besides Chupacabra Spam Guy, there's Cubby, Dr. Cub, that's one. The Big H is another one. Dr. Strange is the other one. Stallion, Professor Hector, and Daddy Stings. So out of all those, which one do you think will be your top three? I like uh, Professor Hector and um, I love Stallion. (laughs) I might just go with that one. Okay. And I don't know about the third one. We uh, We could just have other which have everybody vote on one. Right, for sure then but you're about to log out <laughs> oh my god um i was about to say yeah so you had any final thoughts oh i was gonna finish my story that you rudely interrupted me in <laughs> <laughs> no so anyway so yes yeah, so i went to the instagram for the um the savages unscripted and i i the, so the spam guy um i'm sure we all get spam emails and at times you get emails from people that it says is your friend but it's it's really spam mail and i guess this friend of mine has been getting spam email a lot from my name <laughs> so i guess i'm spam guy okay hey we'll see what the what the results end up being for this ep- for the for your nickname at least see what you end up being cursed yeah, or I'm... blessed with <laughs> <laughs> yeah and one last thing i actually wanted to say just to go back to this but you know um Holiday depression may or may not be, you know, widely accepted by experts and stuff. But I think it's something that people do feel. Um, you guys just enjoy the holidays. Um, don't have too many high expectations, I think. Don't compare yourselves to people. Just enjoy it. I think time is going by way too fast. It's way... T- Life is way too short to, about, to worry about these things, honestly. Don't give a shit about other people. That's right. You guys matter more. Okay. And this has been Savages and Scripted. <laughs> My name is Al. You guys have a good week. And and I, I, I will have one of those nicknames soon, but my name is Hector. And we're signing off.